Joseph is a coffee farmer from a small village in Uganda. His farm is on a steep slope and is losing a lot of soil through erosion. He sends an SMS to We Farm and asks how he can prevent this happening. His question is sent to all the members of the We Farm coffee group around the world. Marcella in Peru was having the same issue and came up with the innovative solution of digging soil traps and planting trees as windbreakers. She shares these ideas by SMS so that Joseph and other coffee farmers all around the globe can learn from her knowledge without even leaving their villages. Small-scale farmers across the world are experiencing the same challenges and often lack communication tools, making them extremely isolated. A farmer who has come up with an effective solution to a problem may tell a friend or a neighbor, but the information usually doesn't travel very far. Opportunities for small-scale farmers to share their wealth of knowledge with each other are few and far between. But if farmers can talk to each other directly across large distances and languages, innovative ideas and solutions travel quickly and enable people without internet access to gain the knowledge they need to improve their lives. Reliable internet access is still a huge challenge in rural Africa, Asia and Latin America. In contrast, mobile phone use is spreading like wildfire, creating a new generation of tech-savvy people who have bypassed the World Wide Web altogether. This is where WeFarm comes in, using the simplest mobile phone to tap into the power of the Internet. As technology changes, WeFarm will adapt to new devices and behavior patterns. Over time, the best questions and answers will be stored so that they can be used by anyone, anywhere with a mobile phone. It's not about telling farmers what to do. It's about empowering farming communities to help each other so that people like Joseph and Marcella can work together to make life better for both of them. We Farm is a project from the Cafe Direct Producers Foundation, an NGO that works with 250,000 small-scale coffee, tea and cocoa farmers in countries across Africa, Asia and Latin America. To get involved, go to www.wefarm.info. WeFarm takes great consideration when it comes to their farmers. They have a system where every piece of information registered farmers receive is personalized and tailored to their needs. Jamila shares with us just the way their system works. Now, in most cases, when you're sharing expertise or you're giving farmers real-time information, as an industry, we like to paint farmers with one brush. All farmers in maize, or all farmers producing maize need this. That is not true. Farmers are individuals with their own dreams, aspirations, and different characters. So how do we give farmers information that is more personalized and is helping them on a day-to-day basis? rather than information that is more generic for everybody else. So assume I'm a farmer and I wake up and the first thing I look at, I look at my phone and I see a message that comes, excuse me, from WeFarm that says, hey, you haven't irrigated your farm the last three days. It's drying up, the moisture is going down. Why don't you do X, Y, Z? That is more personal, that's more in touch with me and my needs rather than, you know, for every farmer generic information. In short, FarmLog is a system that allows the farmers to give more information and get more information back in terms of how do I walk this journey of taking care of, me, of my maize from the time I plant it to the time I take it to the market. And what do I need as that individual farm? So, uh, talking a little bit more on the communities that we have on We Farm, uh, the communities are clustered in so many ways. One of it is the topics that they discuss. For example, if you're interested in dairy and you have been talking about dairy, we put you in a cluster that is dairy. But other things also come into play because, you know, depending on the location, if you're talking about crops, maize that is grown in Western is not necessarily the same maize that is grown in uh, Central. So. We also cluster people according to location. Um, for example, if you are a maize farmer in Western and you're asking a question about maize, the probability of that question getting outside of that region is very low based on how we match the question to the best responders. 
Through this, they're able to track harvesting trends across various regions. They're able to tell which farmers in which regions are harvesting, what, and even how much they might harvest in a particular season. So imagine you have mice, yes? And um, you spot pests or a certain disease or the maize is wilting and you don't know what is wrong with your farm. So you go to your farm, uh, put Q into a text, send exactly what you're noticing. For example, my maize leaves are becoming dry or they're becoming yellow, what am I going to do? And you send that information to 22301. That information behind the scenes, what we usually don't talk about is the WeFarm engine is based on artificial intelligence, where it picks that information and understands the intention of that question, filters it through different mechanisms and find out the best farmer in our network to respond to that question. And that question is sent to these best farmers who are A, have the highest expertise because we are able to detect how long they have been doing this what they have been talking about, how many answers they have given regarding maize, and determine their expertise using a ranking mechanism where that question now is related to these farmers. The farmers are able to give you a response and the response comes back to our servants and back to, to the farmer. Yeah, that's in a nutshell how it works. Uh, we are in East Africa, then Kenya, Uganda, and soon to start in Zania in about a month's time. So we are growing and the network is almost 900k now. So very soon we'll be counting our days to reach 1 million and beyond. The WeFarm community is thriving. Jamila shares with us just how many people are on the platform and the success stories they have received from farmers across the country. Um, we've answered over a million questions uh, and sometimes we get multiple answers so we have more than that in terms of answers. In our network we are really proud to say we are the first ag tech sub-Saharan Africa focused company to reach beyond 800k users and um, in Kenya alone we have 442 as of yesterday thousand farmers and soon we are adding Tanzania so Hopefully, we will be reaching millions in the next three months. One is changing the habits. This is this strong mental shift which I alluded to, which is I'm not the victim and the hero in this story, and I'm taking charge of what happens or what needs to happen. That's one part. The other benefit is change in production as reported by the farmers in our network. And that is the impact we actually are looking to because that's why we created WeFarm to begin with, to change farmers' livelihoods from subsistence to commercial farmers. And when production changes, you would see that uh, A, the livelihood of that farmer at family unit changes, but also globally it also contributes to you know, food security in, at large. So for us, the most important thing is, one, can we change the behavior of the farmer from being a victim to a hero? And B, can we um, actually show that, the effects of that at farm level, where the production has changed for this particular farm? Within we farm, we have something we call champion farmers. And these farmers are farmers who have, over and above, helped as many farmers as possible within the wee farm ecosystem. And the reason why we want to bring this champion aspect is what I talked about, which is changing that mindset of the farmer being the victim to farmer becoming the hero. And the champion farmer um, aspect has brought in that, where farmers are saying, I helped this number of farmers and I'm proud to have helped them. And I received this number of answers from other farmers and I'm thankful that I have, right? One of them is uh, one farmer called Cleophas from Nandi. And beyond just supporting farmers to get response and also, you know, him getting response from other farmers, he was able to go beyond that and sell his product cabbages through WeFarm. 
So somebody says, I'm selling cabbages, this is my number, how do I get to market? He was able to contact people he knows in the market who are in need of cabbages and help that farmer to sell their products in a different location. So these are many of the stories that are not like to the surface. We can't see them on a daily basis, but when we get to hear about them, it just confirms the reason why we exist and the reason why the community is really important because there are some farmers who know the market better than other farmers. There are some farmers who know and have the expertise in terms of production better than other farmers. Imagine bringing these people to come together in a community format where they can exchange ideas and talk to each other. The impact that they will have among themselves rather than waiting for anybody else to solve those problems for them is really huge and that's what we're looking for. App lovers have also not been left behind. Jamila shares some of the projects in store. Right now we are supporting most of the farmers who are using feature farms. And in, in our defense, that's like the, the bigger population of the smallholder farmers, yeah? We're using tax based, but with time we are channel agnostic. We should be able to provide the same level of experience and information to any farmer who is using any phone or any other you know, means, for example. If you're used to WhatsApp like chatbots, then we'll provide you that. If you're used to using Messenger, Facebook, then we'll provide you that, or smartphone and application for that matter. We're heading there and we are developing some for that particular market, but for now we are happy helping the majority. WeFarm has also partnered with various companies to ensure their reach broadens to farmers everywhere. WeFarm has partnered with many partners. Uh, we have Haifa and Unilever, for example. Haifa deals with uh, the Kenyan dairy industry, uh, supporting smallholder farmers to increase their production. And uh, we've partnered with them for a while now. And one of the great outcomes that we are really proud of is the fact that um, based on the reports and the feedback we get from the farmers and analyzing what the farmers are talking about, Haifa was able to adjust, <coughs> excuse me, adjust the curriculum that they use for capacity building. Because sometimes, as I mentioned before, we think we know what the farmers need, but until you know what the farmers need from their own, from from themselves, you're not for sure. Yeah. So we use that information to give feedback to Haifa. We came up with a better curriculum. The farmers are using that now, and Haifa is using that for capacity building. And uh, one of the things that we partner with organizations is that you want visibility on the network of farmers that you're working with. For example, for Unilever, beyond capacity building, we want to know when farmers are harvesting tea, um, what regions are harvested, what farmers are having problems with in their farms so that they can intervene at the right time. So what closing thoughts does Jamila have for every farmer and app creator? In terms of food security, there's so much happening already from different organizations and government and steps being taken to empower the farmer to become better at producing, but to what extent? Because you would see that there's sometimes so much glut in a certain market that the farmers are losing more than what they're gaining. And at the same time, other people in different parts of the country are dying of hunger. So how, how do you match the needs of the people with what is already available in the country? That's, I think I would look at it that way, which is it's an inefficient industry in terms of not just what is not available, but not even knowing what is available and who needs it at what point. So as I said earlier, I don't think we are food insecure, but the inefficiency and the logistics problems and the multiple layers in the supply chain that exist are making the situation even worse. So our first step would be dealing with that. The farmer facing closing thought is 
They don't have to wait for Serikali. They can change things from the ground up. And I believe that there's so much knowledge and information that is with farmers that is not out there. They should speak up more. Um, let's hear their voices. Let's honor their voices. And let's make sure that we understand what they need rather than thinking we know what the solutions are. Uh, if you want to create an app for the farmers, first find out what the farmers need. Because in most cases, as I said, um, we believe we know. I think that's a point of arrogance rather than a point of knowledge and wisdom. Going to the people whose needs you're going to serve and ask them what they need or observing, even if you're not asking, is much more valuable than probably spending time in an office coding away and building a system that nobody's going to use.